Yeah, we live for that song, boy. Absolutely. You know it's Friday when oh, you hear that, Bubba. The Morning Show with Mr. G and Paul Stone. The talk of the Treasure Coast. 1590 WPSL. Ooh. Uh-oh. Ooh. Oh, wait a minute now. Who could that be? Oh, it... Is it that time of year? It could be. I was not looking at your neck. I was admiring your neck. <laughs> it's lovely. Do it, baby. Get down. You know, Paul, I actually won a Halloween dressed up contest one year. Would you go as? I was a mummy, and I um, I took uh, my, my wife at the time. She let me cut up an old sheet. Uh -huh. And I mean, I cut it in all of these strips. And when I say I was a mummy, I wrapped <laughs> myself in these little strips, my whole body. I dro Driving to work, I was living in Lauderdale and had to drive down to Hollywood. You should have seen the looks I got at red lights and everything. <laughs> but every, every Halloween you do that. You Absolutely. see people with all these weird costumes. Yeah. I won 100 bucks at my job. Oh, look at you. That was the last, first and last time I ever won in a Halloween costume. But <laughs> I guess, you know, I feel like people are generally trying to be more careful with their money these days, except when it comes to Halloween. Absolutely. Big people money. People go all out. I guess. Now, you mentioned sometimes you scare the kids by putting mu music on outside oh, the house and everything. Oh, speaker outside in the bushes. Oh, and did you play scary music? I did. You, you <laughs> and some would even leave. <laughs> you wouldn't even come to the house. You ever been in any of those haunted houses? I have. Some of those are really Ooh. good, man. I, I get, I've never done the Disney thing. Everybody talks about the Disney and uh, Universal Studios. They have these really great uh, Halloween houses that oh. you can go in. No, I haven't been in one. They usually have them around here, don't they? As oh, well? yeah, they yeah. have some. <laughs> According to the National Retail Federation, we're going to spend $8.4 billion on Halloween this wow. year. Wow. I mean, which is an all-time high. I guess the closest was back in 2012. We spent $8 billion. But the $8.4 bill breaks down to about... $83 a person, Paul, for the 171 million Americans who say they're going to celebrate Halloween this year. And here's what we'll be spending money on. 94% will buy candy. Mm -hmm. Yep. No fruit, I, yeah. I wonder, do we spend more money on candy at Halloween or do we do it at uh, Valentine's? Well, I bet it's close. Probably a close race. You know, going to houses that had the lights turned off, we used to bring along a bar of soap. I probably shouldn't talk about that. Yeah. What about eggs? You y'all did eggs. Oh yeah, yeah. Egg, egg toilet cheap. paper. Toilet. You ever toilet oh, yeah. paper? It's called the TP deal. The TP. Yeah. See, yeah. up north we had what they called mischief night. Mischief. Did y'all have that? It, the night before Halloween was always called Mischief Night. That's when you went out and you toilet papered that person that was mean all year oh, long sure. and toilet papered mm -hmm. their trees and the <laughs> soap on the windows and the eggs and all that mess. We had done to us one time. Uh, we, we probably went. About, we saw five of the five of the little rollers, so they had thrown five big teepees around our all the oak trees and, th and it was there for like ever man. i know because what do you do man we well, got to hire somebody to get up in a tree you hire a little kid hire the kid that put it up there <laughs> to take it down he makes money taking <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they, they don't do mischief night down there. i remember in my little town norma new jersey we acted this town was so small the guy that we had our own volunteer fire department mm -hmm. we had the guy that uh ran the general store was also the head of the fire department mm -hmm. he was the head of um he was like the man uh-huh he uh th th this, this town was so small these kids that belonged to the fire volunteer fire department would set fires just so they could put them out <laughs> and that blew my mind i moved to this little town well, i probably paid them 30 40 bucks each time they were out there we were so bad on this particular mischief night one year we weren't allowed to go trick-or-treating the next night <laughs> nobody in the town could go trick-or-treating punishment and halloween was over oh can my, you believe that my, my, my. of course you were in new jersey that happens there all the time oh man. stop it uh i guess that Here's what we're spending the money on the most, okay. though. It's candy. 70% will buy decorations. Do you guys do that? The pumpkin thing? You carve the pumpkin? We've got, we got a whole closet full of that stuff. My wife has a closet for Christmas, closet for Halloween, <laughs> closet for Easter. <laughs> I'm sick of closets, man. I hear you. So but so when, when do you start putting it out? How early? Well, for for Halloween, probably a couple days. we got to get a pumpkin. You, you, you still carve a and pumpkin? You, are you the one that carves it? I do carve it. Okay. It's the old triangle. Uh, oh, you don't you use know. the little funny, fancy stuff that they use. they got no, stencils no, no. for oh, it. Yeah, oh, sure. just what, the triangle yeah, eyes, <laughs> triangle nose, uh -huh, yeah. and the mouth, what do you do? Jagged, you know, teeth, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. You know, those things, mine never last. Is there a secret to making them last longer? Because mine just starts oh, sucking down. It just shrinks <laughs> up and everything. The eyes start wilting and everything. Well, did you put a candle in yours or a light? I, I put a candle. Okay. They have these little lights you can put in there now, too. Is that little, what you use? Yeah, no, but I've been hearing about them. We oh. put a candle in there, let it burn. You and know. Then it you smells get, good, too. You got to get all the guts out of oh, it. You I cut know. it all out. What, what do y'all do with the seeds? Y'all make something out of it? Well, I heard a lot of people dry them out and then like put them in the oven, a little salt on them, and let them cook for a while. Oh. I haven't, I haven't tried that oh, yet, okay. but I heard it works. 
All right. So now, do you actually go to a pumpkin patch and pick your pumpkin, or like uh, Publix or there's something? There's a little church down the way that has them all out in the yard. Mm-hmm. You just give you just put money in the box. Oh, Nobody okay. there. And yeah. Just go pick yeah, one out. Pick you want. one out. Yeah. All right, well, 70% will buy decorations. They'll put the decorations out. 67% will buy costumes for themselves, their kids, and their pets. And 35% will buy greeting cards. I don't think I've ever done the greeting mm, card no, thing for no, Halloween. No. And uh, one more thing, by the way. Uh, one out of three people have already started planning their costume or doing some wow. Halloween shopping. We're a, we're a month away. Well, Halloween is fun. Yeah, it, it is fun. fun. We it always is. do a Halloween yeah, party absolutely. and you play all the... All those good, uh, uh, the monster mash, it was a graveyard smash. <laughs> and, of course, Michael Jackson's thriller Absolutely. doesn't get any That's better than that. Speaking of all thrillers, gee, it's uh, 818 now, 74 degrees, time for the news. I'm 1590 WPSL, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Police say the wife of J. Gerald Smith had dinner already for him at home, but he never made it. Smith, 82 years old, was working as an Uber driver. He was killed Wednesday afternoon in Delray Beach when police say a speeding Lamborghini slammed into his Buick Enclave on Northeast 1st Street. CBS 12's Mike Magnoli has the story for us. We're talking about a boyfriend and girlfriend in separate cars, but putting the pedal to the metal in vehicles right out of a Hollywood action movie, a Porsche and a Lamborghini. Mangled cars, hard to look at in this ugly crash. The innocent victim, 82-year-old Gerald Smith, originally from England, was this crash's only fatality. Family and friends are gathering at his home, supporting each other in this time of need and asking for their privacy, not wanting to release a picture. But police say Gerald Smith was an Uber driver. No passengers in his Buick Enclave at the time of the crash. Meantime, police say the driver of this yellow Lamborghini was 60-year-old Roger Wittenburns, seen here on the homepage of his company. Wittenburns involved in the management of health clubs and gyms all over South Florida. A two-door garage at his posh Mediterranean-style home in Delray Beach, but seemingly no one here. At last check, Wittenburns in serious condition at Delray Medical Center. His girlfriend, 61-year-old Patricia McQuiggan, was driving a Porsche. Police say she didn't crash but she left the scene of the accident and police say the couple spent the day eating and drinking in Delray Beach and CBS 12 News has learned the Lambo even freshly detailed just hours before this crash. Cities across Florida and the nation are seeing a growing epidemic of heroin abuse. In Sarasota, officials say since July 1st, there have been 43 overdoses, overdoses that is, and eight deaths. The heroin is being laced with powerful opioids like fentanyl. Police Lieutenant Randy Boyd said that users and the people around them have to work with the law enforcement to save lives. If you know a drug dealer that is that is cutting nar- nar- heroin and or cocaine with this substance, call us. It is a matter of life and death. If you do this drug, you are going to die. The massive sinkhole that caused a massive mess in central Florida is leaving the company responsible with a massive bill. Cleaning up the damage caused by contamination of the Floridian Aquifer could cost a mosaic company up to $50 million. Meanwhile, tests done on private wells in the area so far showed no signs of contamination. And more water is coming out of Lake Okeechobee and flowing into the St. Lucie River. The Army Corps of Engineers announced yesterday that they're increasing the discharges to 1.1 billion gallons of water a day. That's the same rate as in May and June when discharges led to a massive algae outbreak throughout the river and even on the beaches. Luckily, this time there isn't any visible algae currently in Lake Okeechobee, and the water temperatures have dropped a point or two, making it a little more difficult for the algae to thrive like they did in earlier parts of the summer. Still, the massive increase in fresh water alone isn't good for the ecosystem, and these discharges are expected to continue at this rate for several weeks. A man has been arrested, accused of firebombing a business in Port St. Lucie. Port St. Lucie police officers responded to a business in the 1700 block of Bayshore Boulevard early Wednesday morning because of reports of somebody throwing a homemade incendiary device at the business. Detectives were able to s- identify a suspect, and they went to speak with him at his home. And while there, the man began to fight with the detectives. He was ultimately arrested and taken to the St. Lucie County Jail for arson. Possession and manufacturing of an incendiary device battery of a law enforcement officer and resisting arrest with violence. A 12-year-old girl has been arrested, accused of making specific threats to at least four students in the Lincoln Park Academy through social media. The St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office said that the girl has confessed to investigators, saying she made the shooting and bombing threats to draw attention away from her lying about a potential ride at school earlier in the day on Wednesday. The student body has, uh, the student that is, has been charged with four counts of felony, 
of written threats to kill or do bodily injury in one misdemeanor count of disruption of a school function. And those are the stories making news this hour. Your traffic is coming right up. His dream vacation would be Tampa. He agrees with Garfield. Mondays stink. He once saw Pat Sajak at an intersection. He is the least interesting man in the world. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I use a bottle opener. Let's check the traffic now on the Florida Highway Patrol site. Uh, right now, we're good. No accidents or incidents to report. However, if you're out there driving this morning and happen to see something, give us a call here at WPSL or phone number 340-1590. If Andy yearns for Brenda and Brenda cares about Charlene, who pines for Andy, the three of them form one of these. Kara. What is it, threesome? Mm, no. <laughs> Roger. What is a love triangle? Yes, that's it. <laughs> Kara has obviously had much more experience than I. Roger, back to you. All righty. Uh, um, Alex Trebek, actually uh, part of our random facts for Friday. Since Alex became the host, and you, that goes back to 1984, I guess, Paul. Been there a long you, time. You watch Jeopardy? I do, I do. Uh, are you pretty good at it? My grandfather watched it with me years. Oh, we loved it, yeah. I, I, I get a few, quite a few of them right. I should go on the program, but they say being no, on the program, a lot it changes harder. a lot. A lot harder. Well, there's only uh, only seven games of Jeopardy. Jeopardy have ever ended where all three players had no money. Really? And what <laughs> happens is, well, one of them happened during the second game that Alex hosted actually when that happens all three players are eliminated oh, really? and three new ones are brought in for the next game i didn't know that i've never seen that happen though I mean, you got to be pretty smart to get on jeopardy yeah, you make do. no mistake about you it do. uh let's see 8 30 now uh some more random facts when we continue of course and we're going to be talking about talking to hawk find out what's going on with the auction tonight as well and uh 11 chores and how much kids should get paid for them oh boy when we continue and those are the national stories making news this hour. Let's have a look now at the precious metals market. Gold's at 1340.60. That's up 0.20%. And silver is up 0.04%. That's coming in at $19.98. The precious metals markets have been brought to you by St. Lucie Jewelry and Coins, trading in gold and silver bullion in all U.S. coins since 1994. You're hearing the morning show, Talk of the Treasure Coast, 1590. WPSL. Going to have the time of your life, I promise. And this is the Friday edition of the morning show. And of course, that means we talked to Hawk Levy with the uh, Treasure Coast Auction Gallery, that all American auction house where everybody wins. Yeah, we've got Hawk on the line now. Hey, Hawk, good morning, man. Hey, good morning, Mr. G. How you doing? Fine and dandy, Hawk. And today is the day. And tell us about it, baby. You know, it just seems every day when I wake up on a Friday morning, it's gorgeous out. We've got a great day, and we've got a really great auction uh, every Friday now. We're going on 18 months, actually a little bit longer than that. Uh, you know, it's a great you, – your station does something that's been – they've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's the swap shop. And a lot of people listen to this station. In fact, they probably start calling it now to get a spot on <laughs> they the do. swap shop and sell stuff, yeah. <laughs> And it's just, uh, you know, I've actually tried to call the station earlier, and uh, it's impossible to get in. Well, you know, a lot of the swap shop also limits what you can sell to three items. Well, what we do is, is if you want to, if you, it's a perfect adjunct to the swap shop. We sell hundreds of items every Friday night, and <clears throat> just about anything you could think of at bargain prices. And the beauty of it is, if you've never been to an auction, our auction gallery is a, quite a bit different than most auctions. It's uncomplicated. Uh, our uh, our help will walk you through it. It's very, very easy. A lot of people are a little bit intimidated. Uh, our auctioneers don't talk super fast. Uh, we try to move through a lot of items. But you can also get up and look around during the auction. There's no strictness there where you can, can't do that. And it's very, very, very comfortable atmosphere. It's uh, almost 10,000 square feet of air-conditioned space, so you don't want to have to worry about sweating and, uh, you know, that, that type of thing. This week we've got some great, great items. We have everything from, just to kind of give you a quick rundown, uh, we have 
walk, I mean, everything from household appliances to lots of furniture uh, to decorative items from the, even all the way back from the 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, in fact, we even had uh, a couple of weeks ago, we even had the kitchen sink. So just you name it, <laughs> we have it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's literally anything to think of. We had some really cool steamer trunks, which are great make coffee tables. So, you know, those of you like to decorate your home or your man cave uh, or need specific items, you got kids coming down or you got to, you know, you got to decorate a whole house or get new furniture. You really can do it for a fraction of it would cost you to go to a new store to buy the items. And most stuff, you know, a lot of a lot of things we get, uh, uh, Mr. G, is, you know, like been in a guest room and it's never been used. So there's some really, really great deals and great stuff. We have the most gorgeous bedroom set. You've got to check it out on Facebook. That's veneer. It's beautiful. If you see, I'm looking at a picture of it. Uh, dining room set with, uh, you know, with eight chairs. Uh, just all kinds of phenomenal, phenomenal items. Uh, old, uh, like an old, like a giant, uh, four foot, five foot, a gilt cherub lamp, which is absolutely gorgeous. We've got a cash register that's brand new. Then right next to it, we've got a cash register that's from the 30s, maybe 40s. Mm. Um, um, you know, uh, just anything you could possibly think of. Now, oh, you're wondering, well, you know, how can I, how can I just see what they're going to be before I, I come on all, all the way and up there? Well, you can. At 1 p.m., you can, you can see everything at the auction gallery, or you can log online at tcauctiongallery.com, and it'll say, View current auction and you view the auction. You can get a good look as to what's going on. But if you've not, you have nothing to do, or if you really want something different to do on a Friday night, you know, go have an early dinner and then come on and down to the gallery. It's a blast, I promise you. If you come down, you you know, I get we get people that go there every week just for the show. They might buy two or three items, but they just enjoy it. It's something to do on a Friday night. So especially your listeners, I think you'll find it's a really a great time. Hawk, where are you located in beautiful Port St. Lucie? Uh, we are located in downtown Port St. Lucie. Do you like that, by oh, the way? Oh, that's downtown? downtown? We got yeah, a downtown? downtown? Get the heck yeah, out of here. Yeah, we call <laughs> we, we, we call the Civic Center area our downtown. That uh, whole area is really considered, as far as I'm concerned, mm-hmm. I consider it downtown. A lot of people do. It was designed that way. Mm-hmm. Let's start calling it downtown Port St. Lucie. There you go. We're at a quarter of, as soon as, there, as soon as that highway comes through, uh, you know, Crosstown Expressway, it's going to be downtown. Believe me, that place is going to blow up. Um, the, uh, it's on the corner of Village Green Drive and US 1. And it's <clears throat> right on that new, on that corner there. You'll see a big sign in the back across the top that says Auction House. Uh, and uh, we open up at one o'clock, about 12, 1 o'clock so they can come in and register early. Come take a look. I mean, it's really, you'll see hundreds of items that are going to be also awesome. Knickknacks, glasses, all kinds of, I mean, amazing stuff. I'm not kidding you. You really got to come down and take a look, folks. Very good. And that's uh, Hawk Levy uh, with Treasure Coast Auction Gallery. Uh, TCAuctionGallery.com, folks. Uh, 772-359-1400. By the way, Hawk will be talking with Cliff on Swap Shop this morning as well. So make sure you give him a call. Uh, we thank Hawk for calling us. We talk, we talk to Hawk every Friday. Mm-hmm. Every yeah, Friday. A lot of interesting things going on with the Treasure there. Coast Auction Gallery. And we appreciate you, my friend. Uh, 844 now, the morning show. G and Paul. And we'll be right back. Speaking of sports, from Studio 3BA, let's talk sports. Sports with Paul Stone. Well, thank you, G. Former Gator Jacoby Jacoby Brissett. Yes, he scored on a 27-yard quarterback keeper to give New England a 10-0 lead. It's down in 15 from the Houston 27. One offset to the right. Play fake by Brissett. He's going to run. Get him into the 25-20. 15-10. Jacoby with a cut at the 5. He's going to hit. Diving for a touchdown. <laughs> Yeah, but he ran for a 27-yard for his first NFL touchdown, zigging when more than one poor Houston boy was zagging. <laughs> and that man had to feel pretty good, didn't it, Jacoby? Running until I got stopped. <laughs> so, I mean, it was 
it, it worked out how we planned it was gonna work out and, and just had to make one guy miss at the end of his own and and the guys up front did a great job and uh Malcolm on that side did a great job blocking that guy. What was that like your first career NFL touchdown? It was crazy. It was, it was awesome. Uh definitely great. You see all the players just run up to you. Uh, I kinda got a headache from all the head bob head bumping, but it, it was it was definitely worth it. How can you call the bill after that touchdown? <laughs> Talk a little bit about why that was so important. Uh, I was supposed to, supposed to give him the ball, uh, make sure they don't get it, so make sure we get it, so I gave it to him. Did, you just back? did he give it back to you? Yeah, he did. Well, a couple of, there was a game last night, G. Clemson finally turned in the performance everyone thought they should do, ripping up on Georgia Tech 26-7. to And on Saturday, a bunch of teams, including Texas A&M, Wisconsin, the winner of Tennessee, Florida, can vault themselves into some serious playoff contention. And now, high school football, which is, of course, tonight. Yeah, baby! Yeah, it's week five of the high school football season. Tonight on the radio, Martin County host Centennial. Tiger quarterback Austin Kirkendall needs just 114 yards to break the school record, which is his, for the most passing yards in the season, which he set at, in 2014. Through four games, Kirkendall has thrown for 1,279 yards, 11 TDs, and just one pick. Pre-game starts at 6.45 and kickoff is set for 7 o'clock on both WPSL and WSTU. Hey, our young Mike yeah, has that call. Absolutely. You better yep. believe it. In other games, Treasure Coast looks to rebound from their close loss to Martin County last week when they face Westwood. And finally, Cent- Central will face Wellington while Port St. Lucie is on the road taking on Merritt Island. Right on, baby. 8.49 now. It's the morning show with G and Paul at 1590 WPSL. And we'll be back. Well, good morning. It's 849. Time for the final newscast of the morning show from WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Studies across Florida and the nation are seeing a growing epidemic of heroin abuse. In Sarasota, officials say since July 1st, there have been 43 overdoses and eight deaths. The heroin is being laced with powerful opioids like fentanyl. Police Lieutenant Randy Boyd says users and the people around them have to work with law enforcement officers to just to save their lives. Moving right along, the state is planning to spend big bucks to very soon to repair the Florida Capitol. But now that's seen, seen the plans. Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putton, well, he's not crazy about the look. I would like to see what the options were that were rejected in favor of what we have because it, I don't know, it's just one guy's opinion, but it's, uh, it's, not, it's not particularly attractive. The massive sinkhole that caused a massive mess in central Florida is leaving the company responsible with a massive bill. Cleaning up the damage caused by contamination of the Floridian Aquifer could cost Mosaic Company up to $50 million. Meanwhile, tests done on private wells in the area so far show no signs of contamination. And more water is coming out of Lake Okeechobee and flowing into the St. Lucie River. The Army Corps of Engineers announced yesterday that they are increasing the discharges to 1.1 billion gallons of water a day. That's the same rate that in May and June when discharges led to a massive algae outbreak throughout the river, and even on the beaches. Luckily, this time there isn't any visible algae currently in Lake Okeechobee, and the water temperatures have dropped a point or two, and that makes it difficult for the algae to thrive like it did in earlier parts of the summer. Still, the massive increase in fresh water alone isn't any good for the ecosystem, and these discharges are expected to continue at this rate for several weeks. A man has been arrested accused of firebombing a business in Port St. Lucie, St. Lucie police officers responded to a business in the 1700 block of Bayshore Boulevard early Wednesday morning because of reports of somebody throwing a homemade incendiary device at the business. Detectives were able to identify a suspect and went to speak with him at his home. While they were there, the man began to fight with detectives. He was ultimately arrested and taken to St. Lucie County Jail for arson, possession of a manufacturing of an incendiary device, battery of a law enforcement officer, and resisting arrest with violence. And finally, a 12-year-old girl has been arrested, accused of making specific threats to at least four students at Lincoln Park Academy through social media. The St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office says the girl has confessed to investigators, saying she made the shooting and bombing threats to draw attention away from her lying about the potential riot at the school earlier in the day on Wednesday. The student has been charged with four felony counts of written threats to kill or do bodily injury with one misdemeanor count of disruption of a school function. And those are the stories making news this hour. Looking at your traffic right now, it's all good. No incidents or accidents to report. However, if you're driving this morning and you see something, please give us a call here, 340-1590. This 
one of Paul's favorite songs. <laughs> the Rugrats. You bet. You know, survey says. <laughs> the survey found 66, no, 68% of us think kids should get an allowance for doing chores. I didn't get no stinking allowance. Just do the job. Get the garbage out. And I tried to give my kids an allowance, and they blew that and uh, <laughs> took it away. They still wanted more probably later on the week. I guess 40% said it should start between 8 and 10 years old. About 30% said it should start as early as 5. But here are 11 chores, Paul, and how much the average person thinks they're okay. worth. Okay. Give me a break. Setting the table. Well, well you're gonna does feed your them? mom do that? Are they going to eat? I mean, uh, you're going to pay them to set the table so they can sit down and eat. A dollar thirty-one, And where are these, where are these prices 31. coming from? <laughs> what was this, back in 1920? <laughs> Taking out the trash, a buck ninety. Oh. The kids should get, for doing the dishes, $2.03. That should be way more than that. Nobody likes doing dishes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Never you put them in the dishwasher anyway. <laughs> cleaning the bathroom. No, cleaning the bedroom. Cleaning their bedroom? Wait a minute. Don't they live there? I can see if I'm, I'm paying them to clean my bedroom, but they stay in their bedroom. Two dollars and seven cents plus an extra one eighteen if they make their bed. So you need a bunch of pennies on your little bank to pay these little kids off. Oh, and, you mean to tell me we got to pay our kids to make their own bed? I'm telling you, dusting or wiping down countertops. Well, that ain't their deal. I can understand maybe. Yeah, why don't y'all help me out with that? Two two dollars and twenty cents. Sweeping, mopping, vacuuming. Two fifty five. Being responsible for a pet. Uh oh. Oh. You know how many pets my mother in law has now? That no. used to be ours yeah. when we were when the kids were little. She still has them. Yeah, some well, some of them have died, but yeah, almost right. every pet we got. Oh, Dad, yeah, I'll walk him. Mm-hmm. I'll clean up the dude. Uh-huh. Uh, never happened. <laughs> here, here, Pat, you want the uh, Pat took all of the animals. She has every <laughs> animal that our kids thought they were going to take care Parakeet. of. Parakeet. Uh, no, no, didn't do that <laughs> one. Didn't do that one. Um, cleaning a common area like the living room, two dollars and seventy two cents. You know, I had this thing. I had a setup in my house where the kids took turns. Saturday was the day. Who who or, or 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 daily? Who did the living room yesterday? Okay, now it's your turn. It just rotated. Everybody mm-hmm. did a different part, so everybody knew how to do stuff. Uh, doing laundry, two eighty two. Cleaning the garage, five twenty. I would never have my kids do that. That's a nightmare. <laughs> and then mowing the lawn, six twenty eight. Each time they do it, and that's a that's the priciest one on the list. So eleven chores, and how much kids should get paid to do them? Wow, they ain't paying you yeah, diddly. I'll tell you that back in the day. Paul. Okay, G. Well, three hundred and seventy four years ago. That's a long time, G. Sixteen forty two to be exact. Act, Harvard held his first commencement ceremony, for, and that was before the country was even established. How hmm. about that? Harvard's an old place, man. 237 years ago in 1779, American warship Bonham Richard, commanded by John Paul Jones, defeated the HMS Serapis during the Revolutionary War. During the battle, Jones said, I have not yet begun to fight. <laughs> I thought Jones was a pirate. But did you know that he later learned how to play bass guitar and played a bit of band called Led Zeppelin? Oh, get out. He was <laughs> he the one was. on bass? That must be him, yeah. And 105 years ago, <laughs> the term bonehead was first used Uh-oh. to describe minute. New York Giants baseball player Fred Merkel, who failed to touch first base after his teammates scored the game-winning run on his hit. The slip-up cost the Giants a pennant and became known as Merkel's Boner. Well, <laughs> well just wait. <laughs> but wait a minute. But, but why bonehead? It's, it's... Well, I guess your head's made out of bone, right? I mean, uh, uh, okay. we all got boneheads, I guess. All righty. Yeah, and let's uh, see. <laughs> 47 years ago, in the Daily London Mirror, the, the Paul McCartney is dead, it said. Don't take drugs. Oh, I, well, you remember the whole Beatles thing back oh, in the yeah. All the album covers were screaming, he's dead, and all these clues that would lead you to think that he was dead. Exactly right. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see here, G. Uh, 78 years ago in 1938, a time capsule to be opened in the year 6939. Oh, come on. Was buried in the grounds of the World's Fair in New York City. 6939? <laughs> that ain't going to happen. 6939? <laughs> <laughs> well, there ain't be a world by. I, I, who knows? No. We won't be. We will be long gone by then. You know, wow. G, I feel like a little danger zone today. How about you? Well, I yes, feel I dangerous. Ain't. I feel dangerous. You feel the need for some speed? I do, I do, I do. Oh, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. We'll let this roll. We're out of here, Paul. Have a great weekend, G. You too, Cliff. We're WPSL Port St. Lucie.